Good morning, guys. It is, what's today? I don't even know. Wednesday. Wednesday? Day after tie-dye day. <laughs> it's the day after tie-dye day. So we have spent the morning packing up all of the tie-dye orders. Thank you guys again so much for ordering. You guys are like the best. And I know that Romeo is about to say that we're gonna do it again. We're gonna do it again? We were getting a lot of comments and, and DMs and emails that you guys missed out again. And I know when we, when we dropped these things, this was the biggest one and it was only, well, it was only, it was 50, like 55, 55 pieces. Um, and then they're all unique. And obviously that's like a lot of tie dye to do. Um, but we're thinking, thinking, depending on the type of thrifted clothes that we can get our hands on in right now, hopefully they will be able to send us some stuff and we can do a huge drop. It's been such a great project for us while we're quarantined and just doing something productive and also helping his small business. Cause that's, that means so much to me. So we're so grateful that you guys ordered. So we've been spending our morning packing up all of your orders, writing notes, and yeah, I just have a few more orders for my Etsy to pack up. Okay, so I just showered, and yes, I put back on the exact same clothes because I didn't do anything. <laughs> 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 Comment down below if at least one time during this quarantine uh, you have showered and put back on the same pair of clothes. Romeo is just finishing up the, the last order and we are going to head to the post office because all of these packages are going out. I showed you guys in the last vlog that there were a couple of new dividers or like organizational things that I wanted to put in my DIY studio. So I think I'm gonna be reorganizing all of my DIY supplies. I get a lot of questions about what DIY supplies are like my favorite or like must haves for to have always on hand if you ever wanna do like crafting and stuff. If you guys wanted to kind of create like your go-to DIY stash, I'll give you guys some of my favorites and must-haves but i think we're gonna go for a walk today too yeah. do you want to go for a walk yeah look at those paws look at those paws Okay, oh my gosh. Okay, it's much later now. We are in my DIY studio now. And I showed you guys in the last vlog this cabinet. And this is where I keep the majority of my supplies. So there's like glue and tape. And this is office supplies. And this drawer is like more like macrame and beads and yarn and washi tape and feathers. This is the drawer that I really want to better organized. So I've got like wooden dowels and beads and like jewelry making stuff and then glitter and some other stuff back there. This is pretty good. Like all this like raffia or like juke cord and like smaller like hemp cord. And then this should be, yeah, this is like um, bags and stuff. We actually got these in the Philippines, these like shopping bags. Look how pretty. Oh my gosh, I love those so much. Like for a special birthday, I like to have stuff like that in the drawer. So I showed you guys that I always buy these dividers at Goodwill or any thrift store really when they're under $2. And these were both $1.99 and they fit in these drawers perfectly. Like that's why I kind of get them because I'm like, ooh, those would be really good to, to do my drawers with. So I'm gonna do the wooden one in here. I don't know, I, I guess I just need to take, take off the sticker, take everything out. And I guess I can organize it into this container as I go. <laughs> I don't know. So since we're in the glitter wire bead drawer, I guess I could talk about like these supplies. I don't really have go-to glitter because I don't really do a lot with glitter. I feel like the only time that I use glitter is when it's like the holidays and I'm making like ornaments or something like a little more like that. So I actually don't have a lot of glitter. And if I do, it's very champagne -y gold neutral. Like I don't really go overboard. And like I have like a little bit of red. I've never used this glitter glue. I think, don't know what this was for. It's just like in my studio. For wire though, I've like this type of wire, like floral wire, I actually use this a lot. I use it to make pendant lights sometimes when I need to like wire something shut. Oh gosh, I actually do, this comes in quite handy. I have it in a copper color and a silver. Having wire like this on hand and a pair of wire cutters, like whether they're small and like a more like jewelry type wire cutter, like this pair, they come in 
pretty handy. So I would definitely recommend that. This is like more like little beads and embellishments. I mean, those are kind of like on a project by project basis. I don't really have like any kind of favorite. Uh, what I do use a lot are rings. I have these two left over from a different project and I use the large scale ones a lot for if you're gonna make a wreath or I've used it to make, again, a pendant light. I've used it to make macrame. Like these are great for macrame too because you can hang the yarn off of it. Another thing in this drawer that's very helpful, don't always use, but it's fun to have, is Sculpey clay or any kind of polymer clay. Um, these packs are about $2 and I've made tons of stuff. Like I even have different colors in here and I have like a little stencil. Um, I made some really pretty sunflowers for like a fashion kind of trend video. You could make keychains and moon, like a uh, crescent, crescent moon, like what is it called? When it's on like the string and it's really pretty, I'll put a picture in. Add them onto things. A Sculpey clay is just like really cool. And then you bake it in the oven. I think I like the bake in the oven kind of clay better than the air dry clay. I feel like I break air dry clay really easily like i've made some like really pretty jewelry bowls before that were air dry and they broke i broke them randomness in here like i have like some wooden beads left over from holiday two they're just like really fun and the bag of them is actually kind of kind of expensive i think you can get like a them in bulk on amazon sometimes i keep stuff and i'm like who gave me this where is this from i have like a little cute little pom-poms never opened but i thought they were really cute wooden dowels and bamboo skewers i actually think i sometimes i pick up some things from the dollar store i don't shop there often just because the fact that it's all a dollar is super sketchy to me like who made this where'd this come from i get a weird feeling <laughs> i put them around a mirror like something like this like a mirror like that and like made like sunbursts and things like that i have leftover pieces of copper from a couple projects because i actually really like these too because you could do these in macrame wall hangs I did one where i slid the yarn through the copper piping and kind of made like a really cool copper detail on it kind of like save scraps like this because you never know when you're gonna use them You remember how I told you that I, oh. <laughs> you remember how I told you guys that I always pick these up at the thrift store because they fit in my cabinet? It's too long to go deep ways. <laughs> Just me and you sitting in here not knowing what we're doing. Okay, that one fits. Wait, what the heck? This one just like that much longer? That one's too long. Okay, so they normally do fit. That one's just like this much too long. Okay, that actually looks a lot better. Everything's just a little more separated. Let's talk about glue. So glue might be one of the most important things. Um, so I always, 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 always have a hot glue gun and glue sticks. And my favorite glue sticks are these because they are super strong and they are gorilla glue and it's five times mer five bleh, mer mer five times more durable than regular hot glue sticks um and it bonds wood metal glass plastic floral fabric leather foam and more where's my hot glue gun i think it's in my tools it's like i'm trying i'm trying we're trying to talk about diy supply we're not trying to play with little babies oh my goodness She's in play mode. So my hot glue gun I got from Amazon and I really like it actually. It's a really pretty color. I mean, it's obviously like been through some things now. It's a really pretty color and no lie, I actually got this because it would have looked good on camera when I was filming, but it's actually really, really good. Oh. E6000 glue. I like hot glue and I like that strength of hot glue because I don't have a lot of patience. Um, but the E6000 glue is industrial strength bond and it's super, super strong. Like you won't, you rarely be able to get whatever you glued apart after you've glued it with E6000, but it takes a while to stick and, and dry and adhere. Um, so a lot of the times I don't have 
a lot of patience, but in the case of like when we had to repair some things on that rattan bookshelf back there, there were a few pieces that were um, coming off. All I did was put some E6000 glue on the place that I needed to glue, and then I put some blue painter's tape over it to hold it in place while it dried, and then walked away and came back a day later and pulled it off and it was perfect so in that case it works out really good so e6000 glue is a must um <laughs> where's my mod podge where is my mod podge mod podge glue is also a crucial <laughs> i don't know where my that's a bad i don't know where my mod podge is oh i see i see my mod podge okay it's up there so up there on the very up there, a must. I use that when I want to seal the top of something, um, like I am blinking on a project. I know I use that when I did my watercolor art for my kitchen. I used Mod Podge glue to glue the watercolor paper to the canvas. I use it, uh, uh, I will insert what other projects I use them for. What you doing, Kinsley? You trying to get in my yard? So when I was home in Texas, I went to the craft store, Hometown Crafts with my mom in Kerrville, Texas. So I got all of this fringe trim and it was so cheap. A dollar for four yards. So that's 25 cents a yard for this really pretty fringe. So sometimes I'll find something like that that I just can't pass up because I feel like I could turn it into something later on. So I kind of accumulate some DIY supplies that I don't really have any idea what I'm gonna do yet, but it's just too good. I mean, you don't, you rarely come across fringe trim for 25 cents a yard in pretty colors like this. Back to glues. I feel like that's all the glue that you really need. Oh, also I have Fabri-Tac, Fabri-Tac, which is fabric glue and it is permanent and you can wash. Oh, I just stabbed myself in the ear, ow. Glues are kind of an essential thing. Macrame. I have macrame scraps here. I have a macrame spool there. Another macrame spool up there. I personally would say macrame is a must to have on hand. Always find it useful. Whether it's creating a hook for something that's actually not macrame, but something else, or making a macrame thing, or I just made macrame coasters while in quarantine, and now I'm gonna be doing other macrame projects. So bohemian urban style. Um, so maybe macrame isn't necessarily your style and it won't be essential, but I think it's fun. I have like these pretty packets of, of glitter. <gasps> That one is open? Uh, I don't know what to do. Kids, okay, so what do we do? Pause, we'll be right back. There's just, there's just glitter everywhere. It was fine. It's all, it's all over. It's gonna be in my hair before you know it. Don't really think the pipe cleaners are essential, but we probably all have them if you're a DIYer at some point. I have a giant thing of feathers. I was an owl one year for Halloween. Not really essential. Pearls, fake pearls. <gasps> my gosh! Oh my god, maybe I should not be <laughs> Maybe I should not be doing this right now. I'm gonna end up with a bigger mess than I started with. I do find a lot of use for jute cord gifts or presents or I've used jute cord to re and like revamp up and thrift flip some like lampshades and the one in my um, living room specifically, I'll show you. I got these from the thrift store for 43 cents. Keep my eye peeled for stuff like that when I'm thrift shopping because sometimes people donate a lot of like craft supplies. I think that a sewing machine is vital. This is my sewing machine. I have an Elna sewing machine and it's number 32. Two, three, zero. My grandparents, or a combination of my grandparents and my mom, I have two sewing machines. I have a serger and a regular sewing machine. You've probably heard me say that I went to fashion design school at FITM in Los Angeles, um, which is why I moved to California. And when I went off to college, when I graduated from high school and I was I got into FITM, um, they bought me a sewing machine and a serger. The sewing machine I 
always find a use for it. You guys have seen me sew so many different things. Before I had this Elna one, which is more high-end, I had won a Brother sewing machine from Walmart, and I believe it was like $100, and it did exactly what I needed it to do. Sometimes you just need a sewing machine to stitch a straight line. If you're a little more advanced and, and you wanna do like your own zippers and your pillows or things like that, um, those sewing machines can do that too. I do think that that is pretty essential. I love to paint. You guys know I've been talking about painting. I did a whole painting video and I love to paint with both acrylic and watercolor. I have every kind of acrylic paint. Some acrylic paints here just like on display, they're not expensive. So I tend to overbuy all of the colors. So like I have all of these acrylic paints, all different colors, slightly changes in different colors. I just buy it because you never know when you're going to need them and have more in here smaller more colorful ones that came in like a pack that i got from tj maxx like a little more upscale or a little more advanced type acrylics that i get from blick in really pretty colors like i use this rust color a lot that i really like my watercolors here and i really like this particular brand fabric paint in here if you ever want to get into that i painted on some like canvas tote bags before i've got matte acrylics from blick and then I have all of my bigger container acrylics. So I get most of my big acrylic paints are Blick Studio. When it comes to brushes, I have some here that are just on the smaller size, more like larger brushes in here. I have a lot in here. Here I have all of my like sewing stuff and in here too. So I've got lots of different color thread. I've got needles and zippers and snaps and buttons and some random stuff in there that I might need. Also, I find it helpful if you are going to paint to have some of these like pads for the different mediums that you're going to paint. Also, something that's really handy is scissors. I have a pair of really good shears for fabric and they're Ginger and I got them from Joann's and the key about getting something more expensive like this from Joann's is make sure that you have a coupon. I think I got them for 50% off. I love this kind of ruler. It's so helpful to make sure that you're cutting something straight. I have a whole nother section in my laundry room that's a mess otherwise I would show it to you that I have all of my like more heavy duty tools. Sanders and paints and and spray paints and paint thinners and things like that um, that are more for like heavy duty projects but this is more of like a DIY good supply list that you would need hello guys good afternoon it is totally the afternoon we did some work this morning and went on a walk a long walk it was really nice it's actually getting kind of warm outside it's starting to feel a little bit like summer actually start getting my head wrapped around this video for sunday so it's going to be all macrame projects and there's lots of fun little projects that i'm going to be doing i want to try out some new yarn um, knotting techniques and maybe mix in some different types of yarns with the cord also make some like cool little thing so it's gonna be a surprise so you have to watch Sunday's video I'm gonna show you this book that I have really pretty book but also has good contents this one this grayish blue one it's called the <laughs> always I always do that the art of macrame I got it at a kind of like mom and pop thrift store and let's see when it was wow this was published in 1972 so and it kind of goes through like where how it all began like the macrame and like starting it in different knots so cool i want to kind of go through this book and get like some like to kind of really understand like the basics of macrame in terms of like its origin and what it was meant for and things like that and like proper terminology types of macrame or how they do different styles of macrame around the world oh look see like all the different knots i need to pull out the macrame Oh. Romeo's been making this Tarzan noise all day and asking me if Tarzan is the same as George of the Jungle, which is the same as the Jungle Book. And I was like, I'm pretty sure all those are different. I've got <sighs> this macrame and I'm thinking I want to incorporate some yarn into some projects as well. Can't forget about camera equipment. My 
good fabric scissors. Thinking through the process now so that I'm not wasting so much time trying to gather it up on a shoot day, especially projects like macrame could take quite a while to film, probably two days this time. Hey guys, it is much later now and I was just feeling like I read that book and didn't read like every word obviously because that would I would that would make me a really really fast reader and I'm not. <laughs> I looked at the different knotting techniques and I just kind of got inspired and I was like, I think my brain has been on overload lately and I just kind of wanted to do something with my hands. So I have been sitting here making a macrame coaster again. I did a tutorial on a macrame coaster. I actually made these on the main channel and they came out so cute. This is with traditional macrame cord. And one of you guys on Instagram actually shared with me that you did it with like some like fun yarn. So I wanted to kind of, I had this yarn that we pulled out earlier and I was like, oh, I wanted to make like some macrame coasters with that. And it actually came out really cool still it's a little thicker it's getting a little later and i think we're gonna watch a movie and just kind of chill i think my brain just needs a break but i do want to show you guys my setup tomorrow for um, my diy video um just in case that interests you at all um and maybe we'll make some breakfast in the morning some avocado toast maybe so good morning guys it is the next day <laughs> Obviously, I'm saying good morning. Um, it is also main channel video filming day and I am just making a little bit of avocado toast. I don't have any feta cheese and I really like feta cheese on my avocado toast. I used to put egg in it as well on top. We do have some egg whites, but I just like, I don't know, something about like the last year or so, I've just been like Romeo and like, <laughs> breakfast or something and i'll like eat part of the eggs and i just like won't eat them like i don't it's i don't know i just toasted up a small piece of bread because we're out of like the larger size and i have my avocado and olive oil because i like to drizzle a little bit of olive oil and also put crushed red pepper salt and pepper and we do we don't have feta but we do have some parmesan so i'm gonna be adding that i also have this cool little avocado cutter thing Put your avocado on here. Well, I'm just gonna drizzle a tad bit of olive oil. Add some crushed red pepper and spiciness. Pinch of pepper, pinch of salt. This shredded Parmesan that's actually really good. So I'm curious to see how it tastes. And if you wanna add egg, you can totally add egg on top. Oh yeah. Mm, it's so good. The olive oil and the salt make a big difference. So I'm gonna eat this really quick and then I'm gonna show you my setup for today's video because I got ready and I'm about to start filming. Um, I don't know, give you guys a little behind the scenes and then you guys will be watching this vlog later today. Oh my God, that was so good. So this is where I'm going to be filming my new video for Sunday and it's going to be all macrame projects. So I do a lot of like hand work where you're like actually looking at just me like working with the macrame from the top. So this is how I do that. So I set up the tripod really high. You can tell that it's like even higher than me. And I use this pole because the cameras all have this little hole in the end of it to screw something in. And this is for a couple of things. You could screw in the attachment and the brace for the tripod so that it actually hooks onto the camera and then it hooks into the tripod itself. Or if you wanna do top down like this, you have this pole that has that tripod attachment here and then the screw on the end screws into the bottom of the camera like so and it hooks into the tripod like this and then we move the table in front of it what i see and what you guys see is this see? and then you can see my hands and I can start working with the macrame. So I've got a really big filming day today and tomorrow, really. I'm probably like tomorrow morning. I will see you guys for a hopefully early vlog next week. I think it's gonna go live on Monday because I have a very special announcement, so you're not gonna wanna miss it. And then you'll also hear in the main channel video on Sunday. If you are liking these vlogs and enjoying them, please subscribe. It would mean a lot to me and Kinsley, which is over there. Hi. Say hi. Kinsley, right? We'll see them on Sunday and Monday and Friday and Monday. Right? Right. Okay. Bye, guys. Oh, you want to play with your baby? 
All right, all right, all right, all right. Here, give me. <gasps> 